Well, Miss Harris, uh, was at one point, was sort of persona non grata, wasn't she? Nobody thought she was of much value and very good at her job until all of a sudden they realised that their sort of fossilised puppet uh, that they've tried to convince us all was leading the country uh, with vigour and vim, uh, frankly, wasn't up to the job. So they're stuck with her, and so they're having to bang the drum quite heartily for Miss Harris, and it seems to be succeeding so far to some degree. Uh, but in order to get her over the line, uh, she's now going to have to pick a running mate who can and potentially um, conceal some of her shortcomings and maintain momentum. Um, I mean, it'll be of interest to you because you don't want her in the White House. Uh, who right. do you think it's going to be? Well, it's interesting from the short list that has been mentioned, you have uh, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg, who would come with no electoral vote. So that really wouldn't be a wise choice to, to help get her across that finish line, as you mentioned. That would be more of the media darling's choice. Um, if you were to ch choose, say, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, that's somebody who I think sparks a lot of interest, especially for those who would be viewed as more moderate, whether if you're a moderate Democrat or a moderate Republican who still hasn't made up their mind. Um, he is he comes with a mixed bag of positions that actually could favor uh, most people um, if you are pro-choice he's pro-choice if you are somebody who's pro-military he served in the military he was also an astronaut he also sits in uh, former senator john mccain's seat who the state of arizona actually reveres and respects highly um, arizona is viewed as a swing state even though it leans to the right so he he actually would be a huge positive i believe for team harris um, if you're looking at somebody like uh, Governor Andy Bashir, who um, out of Kentucky, it's already been mentioned that his security detail has been upped. So there's some flags right there to kind of keep an eye on him. Um, you know, he's somebody who looks like he's the all American pie family. Uh, he is the highest um, uh, as far as favorability ratings go for Democrat governors across the nation. He has the highest percentage at 67%. That's extremely high. He's well liked in a red state where Trump won. Uh, so that's someone to watch out for. And then the last one is, is kind of a wild uh, card that I've been hearing in the last few days is um, a Governor Waltz out of Minnesota. Uh, now, Democrats historically win Minnesota, so I, I don't know how they would view that as a pickup, except for the fact that Biden was struggling mightily in his messaging dealing with the Israeli-Gaza uh, conflict. And there, there tends to be a, a heavier um, uh, Islamic population in that state. Interesting. Now, Amy, uh, something that Chris and I have been talking about before we got to talk to you is that uh, we both, actually, our preference would be for your man, Mr. Trump, to uh, get back into sure. the White House because, um, well, we just think he probably gets it better than other people, um, particularly when we live in such an unsafe world that some of the things he has done uh, geopolitically and strategically actually made the world safer. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it seemed to me that just after that attempted assassination, there was such a huge uptick in support. Well, everyone, all the commentators and all the media said, well, that's it, foregone conclusion. Um, it's done, Trump has won the next election. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, old rattling bones uh, shuffled off uh, closer to the end of his mortal coil. And we've got Kamala Harris, who everyone said was useless. But actually, the polling has somewhat changed and the gap has narrowed. Um, do you still think that your man can do this? Has he still got enough momentum? Or is she beginning to seep away that sort of huge upsurge in support that Trump got after people realised that actually, you know, this uh, assault on his life was uh, mm -hmm. pretty horrific. And, and, um, and, and you know, just so they thought that the way he reacted to that was exactly the sort of American spirits that they want. Sure. Well, he had the wind at his back. He had a nearly perfect, if not perfectly ran convention. And then, of course, the, the attempted assassination, as you just mentioned, and he, he, come, he came out with that uh, on, on top. Um, thankfully, uh, and you had people, very high profile people who had been sitting on the sidelines that weren't um, quite ready to announce their support for him that within minutes and hours um, went public and people like Elon Musk, for example. And so, you know, I, I think right there, he was at a very high point, if not the highest point he probably would, would see for this 
the rest of this election. However, now that you've seen the changing of the guard on the Democratic side from Biden to Harris, he really needs to pull back and focus on the issues. And he needs to start comparing on and contrast on those issues. Like you said, you felt, you yourself, you're not even an American citizen, but you yourself across the pond felt safer having Donald Trump as president. Well, why don't we focus on that instead of him, you know, attacking her on her ethnicity, attacking her on whether he feels that she's intelligent or dumb as rocks, as he put it. And that's really where he's starting to lose ground, unfortunately. Amy, I couldn't agree with you more. I wish I could uh, get a word in his ear and say the same. I think that that is really what people feel viscerally now around the West. We want security. We want stability. We want strength.